Greetings everyone, Pete Pardo here from Sea of Tranquility. Welcome to pick 24 of my favorite 30 progressive rock albums of the 70s. Thanks for playing along with us uh, each and every day this month as we count down our 30 favorite prog rock albums from the 70s. No easy feat, a lot of great albums by a lot of great bands, and some bands had many great albums, right? So that's why we've limited, uh, at least I have, I've limited myself to th no more than three albums by any one band throughout the course of the month. So today, for pick number 24, we're going to take a look at a U.S. band. Wow. Go figure, right? Haven't seen many U.S. bands in this countdown so far. You're likely not going to see many at all. It's just the way it rolls, right? In the 70s, you had very short few U.S. bands doing the whole prog rock thing. But uh, they, they left that to mostly the bands from the U.K. and the Europeans and whatnot. But um, I did want to squeeze this one in here you may see another too this is the fifth album from this particular band it was released october 1st 1977 recorded at studio in the country in louisiana as well as woodland studio in nashville produced by jeff glicksman for don kirshner records cbs epic yes it's point of no return by kansas was it you that said how long right yeah, great album. This is actually the first album I ever bought from Kansas. Still to this day, one of my favorites. Fantastic, fantastic progressive rock album. You know, the guys in Kansas were big fans of the British bands. You know, they were big into Genesis, yes, Gentle Giant and King Crimson. Those were some of their favorite bands. And, and they, you know, you got uh, two, well, two guitarists, two keyboard players, violin player, vocals, bass, and drums, right? But you had two guys, one guy playing keyboards and singing, the other guy playing keyboards and guitar, right? So you had, uh, well, let's talk about the band, why don't we? So Steve Walsh, of course, on organ, synthesizers, piano, lead vocals. Carrie Livgren, synthesizers, piano, clavinet, acoustic and electric guitars. Robbie Steinhardt on all sorts of violins, lead and backing vocals. Rich Williams, acoustic and electric guitars. Dave Hope on bass. Philly e. Hart on drums and additional percussion. So, yeah, you had, uh, you know, two guys in the band who were pulling multiple roles, right? And Steve Walsh and Kerry Livgren. And I guess you could say Robbie Steinhardt as well because he's also with singing as well as playing violin. So, pretty well rounded band. You had the two lead vocalists, two guys playing guitar, two guys playing keyboards. They've kind of continued on, for the most part, with that configuration over the years. Uh, and this, of course, is the classic lineup of the band. This probably, depending on what you think of Monolith, right, this is one of that long line of just no-brainer, kick-ass albums from Kansas. Six, seven, eight album run of really, really special albums. But let's talk about this particular one here. Uh, so, <clears throat> starts off with the soaring title track, Point of No Return. Excellent song, kind of breezy, lighthearted, not too rocking, right? But uh, great chorus, great violin line, excellent song. From there, you got Paradox. You know, this album is progressive rock for sure, but this album rocks too. Paradox is great. Great chorus on that. The band, uh, you know, Kansas around this time had this great ability to combine, like, uh, just very anthemic AOR melodic rock with classic progressive rock. You know, a bit, little bits of folk, little bits of boogie, right? They threw lots of things in there. Then you have uh, one of the very rare instrumentals that this band ever, ever did, which is kind of crazy when you think about it. Uh, the Spider, which is just awesome. I mean, those synthesizers are just kick-ass in there, driving song. Uh, then, of course, Portrait He Knew, another good hard rocker on the album. Then, of course, The Majestic Closet Chronicles. One of my favorite songs on the album, if not my favorite song on the album. I mean, Closet Chronicles is just a prog rock classic. Excellent, excellent song. Great vocals from Steve uh, Walsh. Just killer. Then you got Lightning's Hand, another cool heavy rock and prog rock classic. Robbie Steinhardt on the vocals on that one. Excellent song. And, of course, the big, huge hit, Dust in the Wind, this folky pop song, right? Kind of an outlier on the album, kind of an outlier in their catalog, but beautiful song nonetheless. Gorgeous acoustic guitar, soaring violin, killer vocal from Steve. I mean, it's it's a great song, right? Uh, Sparks of the Tempest, another hard rocking song. Got lead vocals back and forth between uh, Robbie and Steve. 
excellent. Also a good rocker, great guitar work on that. Uh, Nobody's Home, another kind of soaring ballad on the album, excellent. And then Hopelessly Human, another great prog rock track, Hopelessly Human. Got really, really cool instrumental bits and arrangements. Excellent song. I mean, I, I really love this album a lot. And of course, you got the killer artwork, right? I mean, you know, left over turn, point of no return. Two amazing, amazing albums. All right, let's take a look at the charting <clears throat> information on this particular album because this one did very well. In Australia, it made number 52. Canada, number 7. Dutch album charts, 33. In France, 16. U.S. Billboard, 200, number 4. Ironically enough, this band never did much of anything in the UK. I know when I talk to most of my uh, friends and people I know in the UK, they're like, yeah, Kansas were nothing here. They never did anything here, which I just don't understand. But uh, but yeah, they they were a big, uh, big band here. Uh, as far as, like, let's take a look at the um, singles and things. Point of No Return hit number 28 on the Billboard Hot US Singles Chart, uh, number 13 in Canada. Dust in the Wind... Number six here in the U.S., number three in Canada, number 22 in France, Dutch charts 22, Belgium 27, New Zealand 36, Australia 52, Portrait He Knew made it to number 64 here, 62 in Canada. And as far as the sales uh, of this particular one, Platinum Album in Canada, 100,000 units sold, Four times platinum in the U.S. That's right. Four million units sold as of the last time it was certified. So chances are it's probably way more than that at this point. But yeah, uh, an excellent album. A favorite album of mine. Still never get tired of listening to this one. And I do want to thank my uh, cousins, Anne and Linda, for turning me on to this band all those years ago. I think they bought this when it came out, and I got it shortly thereafter. But the reason I bought it is because went to go visit their house. Uh, you know, we we used to go visit uh, my aunt and uncle in Long Island. You know, especially in the summer times. You know, every other month for a weekend, and uh, we'd pack up the family, head to Long Island. And uh, one of the things we always used to do is they would always, you know, show me and, and play for me some of the new albums that they had gotten at the time. And uh, this was one of them. Now remember, like this. Grand Illusion by Styx, uh, the first Bad Company album, uh, Diamond Dogs by David Bowie, and, you know, there was all these albums that they were, Queen, Jazz, and, you know, of course, with the naked ladies on the on the bikes, right? Um, but, yeah, all these albums that, that, that were coming out at the time, uh, I would go over there. Again, I was a Kiss fan, really not listening to much of anything else but that, so they were, like, turning me on to all these other cool albums, and, like I said, Kansas was one of them, and uh, I bought the, right after I went over and spent the weekend there, I had to get this shortly thereafter, so saved up my allowance money for a couple weeks, and boom, I had my own copy of Point of No Return. So uh, let us know what you think of this gem in the comments below, as well as your pick for today. Day 24, as we march our way on to number one at the end of the month. So uh, stay tuned for that. Visit us on the web at www.catranquility.org. We're on Facebook. We're on YouTube. All together, all the damn time. Please subscribe if you haven't already. And click on that notification bell so you get alert of all of our content as it posts. I'm telling you, it's like, you know, um, I, I see other YouTube folks saying this as well. You know, we've got 85,000 plus subscribers here. But, man, like 50% of the people who come to this channel every month don't subscribe. Don't understand that. So, uh, yeah, if you're watching this video, if you stumbled upon this video, please subscribe. If you like this video, why would you want to come back every day and check out all we have to offer here on Sea of Tranquility? So please do hit that subscribe button. Uh, also, uh, click on the... Um Click the like button, very, very important. And down below, we've got the links to our Ko-Fi page for channel donations as well as our merch page. So thank you in advance for all your contributions there. It's greatly appreciated. And uh, stay tuned. We've got, speaking of not going anywhere, don't go anywhere because we've got a slew of new album reviews for you coming up today. So uh, you'll have a whole bunch of them. So stay tuned for that and lots more. We've also got uh, It's All About the Fuzz. Karen LaPrezios and myself will be coming back at you with our monthly installment tonight talking about some of our essential stoner heavy psych classics, right? So do not miss that. That's coming up tonight. Till then, I am Pete Parta. We'll see you real soon. Bye-bye.